Tyler, I well, we give thanks. It's time for yet another album, and this album took us over four years to make. It's an album that is so dear to my heart. It's an album that I truly love. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to be explaining to you why this album is so very, very, very dear to my heart. Now, we started recording this album in the days of the COVID. So we all had time to sit in the studios, bring all the ideas together, create so many different new things, and inject into this very original album. Four solid years of hard work. And I'm so proud of this album that I can proudly say and honestly bring to you that it is the best album Black Rasta has ever made. Now, the album is called The Salaga Soldier. I mean, a lot of people who know Black Rasta as somebody on the radio, you know that my moniker is The Salaga Soldier. Now, who is The Salaga Soldier? In the days of slavery, this was a warrior who fought against slavery. We all know Salaga as a town in the northern region of Ghana. We also used to have a slave market right there in Salaga, one of the most notorious. The Salaga soldier was that warrior who fought against slavery and chased out slave raiders most of the time, enslaving slave raiders themselves. That is why I decided to call this album The Salaga Soldier. It's a warrior album. It comes with a lot of energy and power. And we recorded this album live. We have songs on the album that even have four horns, four different kinds of horns on one song. Flugel horn, trumpet, saxophone, trombone, and tenor sax. We recorded basses live, we recorded guitars live, and we also recorded flutes live, including percussions and even the talking drums. It's an album that we took time to make. It's an album that is spiritually endowed. Now, I did so many different languages on this album. I sang in Jamaican Patwa, I sang in plain English, I sang in Dagbani, my native Nagomba language. And I also sang some of the songs in other languages that you would be discovering. Now, this album had so many different sound engineers working on. We worked with Zap Mallet, the legend. I will not record an album without Zap Mallet. He's a legend of Ghanaian music. And he availed himself for this album. He did a wonderful job. My name is Zap Mallet. I'm a music producer, a sound engineer, a recording engineer, mixing engineer as well. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing for the past uh, 30 years or so. Yeah, 30. 30 years or so, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, the new Salaga Soldier album um, It's of, of course, obviously, a, a, Kuchoko, a Kuchoko event, you know, so um, it was quite uh, very interesting working on it because I, I, I primarily worked on it. Uh, the songs that I worked on, I primarily worked on the mixing. You know, it was, it was quite uh, interesting doing it. It wasn't. It wasn't so difficult working with him at all because he's some somebody I know, somebody I've been working with a long time. So I know where he's where where he's coming from. I know where he wants to go. You know, so it's quite easy trying to uh, working with him as as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. I think the future the future is clear. The future is there for the album. The the album has to um, enjoy uh, much airplay uh, even on the social media. I think it deserves to be there. It deserves to be out there. It deserves to be in everybody's um, playlist, at least, you know, especially in the reggae playlist of the uh, presenters, uh, reggae presenters. It deserves to be on the playlist, on their playlist, and 
definitely defense it deserves, it deserves to be on the playlist of every music lover or every reggae lover in in a globally you know so um i think it's got a lot of potential it's got a, a, a huge future ahead of it and there, there's more things we have to expect from black rasta in the, in the pretty near future yeah now we also had ab producing and recording one track on the album and it's a favorite of so many people around me and the black rasta brand who have listened to the album so far is called Sodom and Gomorrah. I truly love this song. It comes with so much energy and it comes with so much power. We started recording it with Zap Mallet. We got all the instruments played there. After Zap Mallet made this version, I normally like to have four or five versions of every song that I make and I choose the best out of it. I decided to choose AB in Tema to also try his hand on it. I mean, I knew him from the past and I knew that he could give me a certain kind of flavor that I call contemporary reggae. He loves contemporary reggae. So we took the song to him he listened to it and he told me, you know what, Black Rasta, we need to make the song a little faster. I need to change the bass line and I also need to work on one or two other things in it. Are you ready for this? I said, Work on it, man. And boom, he went into it, did magic. And when the song finally was done, I was mesmerized. Now, AB is a, a man who doesn't like working when the artist is around. And I normally would like to be there. Any sound engineer that I have worked with in the past and even now will tell you that I would want to be there right from the beginning of the music to the end. When the mix is done and everything is finalized, I am part of the music. Hello, my name is Abraham. People call me AB. And I'm a sound engineer, music produ producer. And uh, it's been a wonderful journey. So far, so good. Within the journey, I, I've met, I met Black Rasta asking me to be part of uh, his wonderful album, which I uh, accepted. You know, and that's how come we met. And uh, so he visited my studio and uh, we did this song, Sodom and Gomorrah, wonderful song. Preaches about sin, you know, which tells me his heart. I think he's a great guy because anybody who talks about good things and bad things, over bad things, I think he's a great guy. You know, I can say he's a pastor because that's what we preach when we go to, as a, as a pastor, you know. And what everybody talks about tells his heart. You know, he's a great guy. Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, when it came to me, uh, I listened to the song and I said, wow, let me do something different with this song. So I looked around, picked uh, Clive, Kunga. In fact, everything played in, this, in that song was organic. I played live Clives. I played live Kungas. I played live guitars live both bass guitar and then uh, the rhythm guitar you know so it was very organic so if you listen to the song you you get full because of the how natural because of how natural the song you know came out you know and on top of it black Rasa came to add his magic on top by way of perform i mean the performance he really sang well you know and you know that we engineers when you sing well for us it edges us to play well and even, it even urged me to mix well and even mastered well. You know, that song I believe is going to be a hit song. It will go viral. I believe it. Right from the beginning of making the music, I am there and I always love to contribute and also share ideas with people. Now that is what is exceptional about live music. You have so many different people playing different instruments and bringing in their ideas. At the end of the day, you realize that it's rich with ideas and the sound is perfect. This is what we've been able to achieve with the Salaga Soldier. Oh my God. When I start listening to this album, right from Sodom and Gomorrah, all the way down to the African ghost dance, I am exasperated. 
Yeah. So it's an album that is so dear to my heart. Especially having players of instruments coming. We worked with, we worked with so many different players of instruments. And a number of sound engineers. We also worked with um, Nana Finn. Now he's called Two Lock. And he is just a wonderful producer. In fact, he will listen to the music and tell you straight away, Black Rasta, what kind of feel do you want for this album? I will tell him. He will say, I think that it would be better if we give it this feel. He mixed a number of songs on the album. And he is the go-to person anytime you want to have a true a reggae mix. We had a number of mixes with Nana Finn, a.k.a. Tulok. And he was always on time. He made sure that the song sounded the way I wanted it. He understood exactly the Kuchoku me and Zap Mallet invented. Wonderful sound engineers producers and musicians. This album is an album that is so dear to my heart and I will say that over and over. It is the Salaga Soldier. In the next few weeks, I want to see this album all over the world. I want to see it break all the chains and liberate Kuchoko, liberate African reggae. I mean, people love African reggae. In fact, reggae music has its own niche, market, and audience. Reggae music came to Africa a long time ago from Jamaica. Our own people left Africa and took reggae music with them all the way to Jamaica, modeled it, and made it sweeter, and sent it back to us. When we listen to Bob Marley and listen to Bernie Spear and some of these wonderful artists like King Yellowman, who actually is one of my favorites. We started making reggae music ourselves, like the Jamaicans, our own brothers. But we added our own African feel and energy and sounds into that. And we decided to call it Kuchoko, K-U-C-H-O-K-O, Kuchoko. And Kuchoko is onomatopoeia for the sound of reggae. When you listen to reggae music, you hear Kuchoko, Kuchoko, Kuchoko Bam, Kuchoko, Kuchoko Bam, Kuchoko, Kuchoko Bam. So I just decided that, well, why don't we call our kind of reggae music Kuchoko? It's an embellishment of the Jamaican reggae. In fact, it has the soul and spirit of our ancestors in there. Now you will hear us blow the bamboo flute, the bamboo African flute live, at Atetemben live. And it sounds different from the metallic flutes we have all over. On the album, Nana Finn, a.k.a. Two Luck, worked on songs like Bua, which simply means goat. Bua, Bua, Nyene, Da, Da, Da. Da, 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 the sound that I was getting, I wanted to have some different alternative to this one. And we decided to go to Nana Finn. Nana Finn gave me exactly what sound I wanted for it. Bua means the goat. Mr. Goat, where are you running to? You are in a hurry to go visit the fox? Are you in a hurry to go and visit the lion or the tiger or even the wolf? Be very careful. He was the one who ended the life of your father and even your mother. Now you are looking all plump and beautiful. He's telling you that he's sick, so come and visit him. Be very careful. If you do visit him, you will become his food in the next pot on fire. Yes, you will become food in his next pot on fire. So it's a warning. I mean, I come from a tradition where we use animals to tell stories, fables, you know? So I decided to put that into music. Bua is crazy. Listen to the flutes on the album. Listen to the flutes on this particular song. Nana Finn also worked on a song called uh, Put Down Your Arms. When the pre-production was done, we sent it to him for a mix. He added his own feel into it. 
and so many other things into it. And it's all about the crisis we have in Boko, Mampusi, Kusasi. I mean, I come from this area and I do not want to see my people fight and shoot each other. I am a citizen of the world. Wherever there is a war or a conflict, anything I can do to stop it, I do my best to be able to bring a finality to that. That's why we did put down your arms. Listen to the melody. Listen to the energy. Listen to the fire. Listen to the kuchoko in it. Extraordinary, right? Okay, this is nothing but two luck. Yeah. Basically, uh, singer, musician, songwriter, producer. You know, yeah, that's basically nothing but two luck. On this album, I think I worked on about five songs, if I could remember. Boa Boa, uh, a very interesting song, Kere, uh, and uh, a couple of Atif President, Cameroon, and uh, Uba Uba, which he featured Tikinja Fakoli. Very interesting, and uh, it went down well. Yeah, I did uh, the production in these ones, uh, basically. So working with Black Rasta, was, it was easy because you know, it's easy to work with an artist who respects your opinion. You know, he has a high regard for my opinion, musically, that is. So, and he understanding me as a songwriter, singer, musician myself, you know, we could link up at that level because we're both recording artists and, you know, working together on this, these songs. So it was pretty easy. He doesn't make you feel you are, you know, uh, infringing on his creativity, you know, his creative space. He gives you, but uh, when he disagrees, he will take, take time to ask you. Uh, with any time he disagrees or doesn't understand your point of view, what he does, he will ask you a lot of questions. That's his own way of doing it, you know. Yeah, he probably will even share his opinion by, uh, at that moment, but then later he will, he will think about it and then uh, do what he thinks is best. And I, I think... It's great. I mean, working with other musicians, I mean, other very good musicians and stuff like that. It was great. Very great working with uh, Black Rasta, if I should say. This album, Salaga like Soldier, <laughs> it, it's, I think it's long, for me, it, it's long in coming. I, I'm happy it's finally here. I, it has no limit. It all depends on how far everybody around the project believes they can take this, this album. Because this is not a very new artist, you know. Uh, Black Rasta has been around, he's done it all, you know. And still soldiering on, like like he says himself. I think uh, uh, the Salaga soldier for me uh, describes he, he himself, you know, because he's like a soldier, you know. So, yeah, it becomes very easy for people to relate his character with the album. That's why I think it can go very fast. Yes, so it's an album that I will proudly recommend to you. These are times where people concentrate so much on computerized music. We went back into the days, combined the computer, and added a lot of organic analog sounds into the album. You listen to it, and you know straight away where this album is coming from. From the souls and bosoms of Africa. Now, nothing was extraordinary. In fact, he worked on about six tracks on the album. And when you listen to the album, you know straight away that this is the handiwork of Nanafin, a.k.a. Tulak. Now, the one who worked on almost all the songs on the album is Hot Mix. He's an artist himself, TK, you know? And we spent four years in the studio just recording. And this is a producer that is so dear to me. I love him to death. Young, we met in Navrongo years back. And he had been pestering me. He wanted to record me. He wanted to produce something for me. I never thought that he could produce the kind of music that I wanted. So this is a man who is in the church, plays church music. I'm a Rasta man. I want to have my Kuchoko straight, hitting the jugular vein, straight. 
I don't want gospel-like reggae. And no, I want straight reggae. And I want to put in the African feel into it and give it the Kuchoko vibe. But he kept calling, he kept calling. One day I told him, I said, well, let me just give him a try. Let me just go record one song. And then he would stop pestering me. I went into the studio. We recorded one song. Little did I know we were going to end up recording 60 other songs within four years. 60. All the songs we recorded in the studio, we had musicians coming in to play instruments live. He himself played some instruments live, including percussions and even drums, bass, guitar. And on some of the songs, he even lent his voice, singing the choruses and suggesting, oh, let's go like this. Let's do it like, this, like a producer would do. But one thing that makes Hot Mix stand out is that he brought out the singing spirit in me. A lot of Ghanaians know Black Rasta as a poet. When I touch down on poetry, I touch down running. I mean, Hot Mix loves the poetry. But he would always say, oh, your singing is good. Let's do it. Unlike other people who would listen to the voice and say, oh, do the poetry because they wanted the easy way out. He would make sure that we got the chords right. He would make sure that, well, we sang the melodies right and blah, 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 blah. And he would always say one thing that made him stand out. This song that we are making is not the final. Listen to it. Anything that we need to change, let's look at it. I'm also going to take it home and listen to it with my family. We will come back into the studio and perfect it. Until it is perfected, it is not perfect. Sometimes I will sing and I'll ask, are you sure I'm singing good? He will say, ah, well, let's invite people. Let them come and listen to what you're doing. It wasn't because I didn't know I was singing good. It was because for so many years, a lot of producers that I worked with would want the easy way out and say, just do the poetry that you are so endowed with. Yes, I am a master of poetry, but I also have some singing inside me. After all, my first two albums were both singing, singing, singing albums. So Hot Mix was able to bring that out. And a lot of the time, I only needed to go into the studio with a chorus and a certain beat in my mind. And we worked around it and brought out the flesh, the bones, the sinew, the marrow, everything together to make the song stand. I will sing, sing and sing, and he will choose the best bass lines and the best production we could get for it. After that, we would invite in some more experienced people to also look at one or two things that they could add. Because one of the things that I don't like is to come out with music and somebody will say, oh, the chord here didn't go right. Oh, and here there was some off key. Oh, there was that thing. No, I don't like it. So I make sure that before my music comes out, all the top guns in our music industry would have heard it, criticized it, and then we'll work around it and make it stand out. Hey, for Tinkoi Body, that is my maiden name, yes. But people know me in the music practice, yes, hot mix. I'm a producer and a musician as well. I sing, I compose. Basically, I do more production. That's what I do. It's not difficult when you want to learn. Yeah, if you want to become more, you have to be ready to go through more. Yes, and some of us, for me like this, I want to become more. So whatever it takes for me to become more, I'm ready to pay the price. So I wouldn't say it's difficult. Salaga soldier. What we are all waiting for. Finally seen. I would say this album, I can't explain the extent which I expect the songs or the album to reach. I don't have a measurement or I can't say that is where I expect it to be. But I'm expecting it to be where it's supposed to be, beyond human expectations. Because anything backed by love gets its best. Because the album, everything that happened before the album and through the album and at the end of the album is all about love.
the people that work in the album, and Black Rasta himself, you could see that this music he has been through is all about love. Without love, you can't do this. So Salaga Soldier, in fact, I can't wait. And the time is now. This album, I would say, is the best because of the love behind it. Everything, as I said earlier on, everything about this album is all about love. We work through our heart and through God. This is an album that is a gift to the world. Years that Black Rasta will live and finally this album will continue to be there because it's so dear to my heart and we worked very hard. When COVID came and many people were at home and locked down, we were in the studios locking up. So that was what I was able to achieve. Hot mix. 60 solid songs. Yeah, 60 solid songs. Powerful and hot. And he was always patient. There was not a single day that he got angry. Unlike some people that we worked with in the past. Who say, oh, too many retakes. Oh, I don't have time today. You know how it is. We are not well paid in Ghana as musicians. So, I mean, when you are recording, it's almost like somebody is doing you a favor. See? We worked. He will be at home. You will call him and say, well, I have a, a new feel. I say, okay, I'm coming over. Sometimes he would leave church and come and then would have to record and all that. I mean, that spirit is very genuine. So we poured a lot of love into this album. It's a solid album. And please lay your hands on it. He tells me that one of his favorite tunes on the album is Apology from Prison. He put in a lot of energy into it. We gave him some hip-hopic kind of, you know, feel. So hip-hop, reggae. Reggae, hip-hop, you know. And yeah, I mean, the songs on the album are crazy. At the end of the day, we have so many songs to choose from. Some people say, oh, release an EP, six songs. I said, I don't come from the era of EPs. I come from the era of albums. I don't want to go to EPs. I'm not used to EPs. Four songs, five songs, then they call them EPs. I know LPs. I know albums. I don't know EPs. So we decided to release 26 songs. But they said, oh, let's reduce it to about 16 or 15. But we couldn't. We only reduced it to about 19. And the sound engineers that worked on this, Nanafin, a.k.a. Tulak, Zap Mallet himself, and then we had Heart Mix. Yeah, TK, he calls his outfit Heart Mix. How about the musicians who played on the album? De La Botry is the best flutist in Ghana, if not the whole of Africa. De La Botry is a brother I love so much. I think I've been endowed with so many loyalists. No matter where he is in the world, when I call him and say, Della, I'm in the studio, I need some flute on this song or that song. He'll say, oh, I'm in Japan. Uh, we are supposed to be finishing on Tuesday, but I'm going to finish it early and come on Monday before you realize he emplains and he comes to Ghana. And you will think that, or somebody in the corner somewhere will think that, oh, Black Rasta is paying these people gold and diamond, an arm and a leg. In fact, it is just heartical, pure love. The laboratory kept telling me, Black Rasta, this album is magnificent. Let's put all our energy into it. You should see him on the flute. He will come with 10 different flutes in the studio. 10. All wooden, bamboo. Some of them made of material I can't even describe. That's a traditionalist. He will listen to the song and say, pa, straight. He'll go into it. One of the songs that he really, 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 really impressed me on is the sad African ghost. Kogun. Listen to the flutes on that. Whilst I'm telling my story about the ghost in Africa, bam, his flutes are flowing in there. Another song is Adisa, a rendition of Eric Donaldson's Cherio Cherio Baby. Now, Cherio Cherio Baby is a song that so many people know. 
Cherry, oh, cherry, oh, baby. I think I'm in love with you. You know, Eric Donaldson was in Ghana. We had a very nice time together playing a big concert together, Hands, of, hands Across Africa concert. And then I spoke to him about how much I love the song and I would love us to make another rendition of the song. So many people have done renditions around them. Let's give it the African rendition. He agreed. On the day we're supposed to get into the studio, for some reason, <laughs> he called me. I said, yo, Black Rasta. Yo, me ready if you come. But me want to ask you again, how much you say you're going to pay me? And then I said, all right, this was what we agreed on. So, oh, me thinks you are 10 times that, you know. Uh, me can't do it. That has it, it ended. For instance, if we agreed on $10, he wanted a thousand dollar. He wanted more than that. See? So I just said, that, well, don't worry about it, man. Well, the music had already been made. So I went into the studio and I decided to change the whole thing and sing it in my Dagomba dialect, Dagbani. So it's a Dagomba track. In your real Nene kama nkulbura Malange so shenyini Kamna titi mayorelem Nkucheka jesule Nkucheka songoge <laughs> I wish you understood the bani Anytime I sing it, I remember my mother I mean, she was insisting we spoke the language And I'm glad that today I'm able to sing in the language of my mother Sin. And that tune is so dear to my heart. It's a rendition of Cherry Cherry Baby. When the song was done, I sent it to Eric Donaldson. He listened to it and said, Boy, sure. The sound good. It sounds like I me do it again. Sin. Big up yourself, Eric Donaldson, for giving me the permission to do this tune. And I believe that it's going to refresh the song and make many more people love it i mean it's your original music we are not taking anything away from you we just gave it an african feel with traditional african flutes at the tebeng and a lot of other flutes in there listen to it you will be exasperated the laboratory in fact did flutes on more than 30 of the tunes we recorded more than 30 and every time he came all we needed to do was to just, just get some good drink in the studio and just get the vibe going. He would not even wait for you to pay anything. But I always insisted that, no, I will have to deal with that other side. He's a brother. I love him so much. My name is Dela Bakri. I'm the founder and the leader of Hewale Sounds. Hewale Sounds is a performing group that built in Ghana. I work under the late Professor J. H. Kobelan Kitia for the past uh, 10 years from 1996 until 2004. And then resigned from the University of Ghana based at the Boy Center. Now I'm the founder and the leader of uh, one of the giant Ghanaian uh, musical group dealing with traditional African instruments. And we've been researching uh, with more of traditional instruments, everything traditional instrument or music is what I'm concerned about, how to bring them into the contemporary extension or contemporary world, not only to preserve alone, but also to extend it to the contemporary zone. My work with Black Rasta, I think some years back, I don't remember which year it was. I think I did something when I was uh, relocated to Holland. So when I came back, I called Black and I said, oh Black, I have something for you if you can listen to it. He listened to it and he really liked it very well. So one day he called me, I mean, after the call, he told me that, no, we have to do something. He will invite me and then I have to have patience. I mean, every producer knows what he wants to do and the direction of the kind of music, I mean, they want to play. So Black Rasta invited me on the, his album to play all the tracks. To be honest, when he called me, I was like, yes, yeah, this is the dream come true. I really want to work with this amazing uh, person. I mean, I don't call him a journalist or I don't call him a musician. He's an amazing person. He's really a truly uh, man of God, and that's how I see him. Somebody uh, who is more patient and is more 
humble, that's who I am. So when I see people like that, the spirit connect automatically. So anytime he calls me, I'm always humble to go and deliver the work of God. The music with Black Rasta is coming out with, please watch out. I'm telling you, it's something uh, Jamaicans who really, really look for certain elements, you know, that you don't hear in their music. I mean, if you listen to Bob Marley in early 70s, the kind of music that they produce is what Black Rasta is coming out with. You can hear more of indigenous vibes in the reggae music. The reggae music is not too much of computerized or too much of special effects and it's more of organic sound. So I'm not saying because Black Rasta is my friend and if he's my friend, I'll say the truth because he's producing the right thing. So I really got inspired and then uh, with some of the lyrics. So some of the lyrics, to be honest, touches my heart. It was a time I was playing the studio, I was crying. But one of the lyrics that, I forgot the title of the song, but when I was playing, I think he has never arrived by then. So the song heated my spirit emotionally and I started weeping because that is the direction of the music. I mean, it's not just a music to listen, but it's a music of healing as well. Black Rasta is a very nice person. If you don't know him, you don't know him, but he's somebody who is more patient and very quiet person. He respects his space. And then, of course, if you don't know, if you don't know the good thing, he will talk about it. Especially the other things were, that he does on radio, you know him for that. If you do the wrong thing, he will say it. I mean, I'm very glad that's who I am. If you do the good thing, I'll talk about it. If you do the wrong thing, I'll correct you. And if I correct you and you don't agree with me, no problem, because it's your choice. That is who Black Rice, Black Rice Star is. He's very honest and he's very, um, very humble person. If you don't get closer to him, you might, you might think that he's a lion, that he's going to bite you or something, you know. He's a nice person if you really truly know the person very well. I'm very glad to know him as my brother. Yes. This is an international album. I have to say the truth that, please, if you have not listened to the album, go subscribe and listen to Black Rasta. If I tell you something, don't, don't joke with that, please. I am telling you, from day one, when I started hearing the song and I was telling Black Rasta, no, this is so, something different. This is something different. Black Rasta has hit at a different level of, I mean, uh, music globally now. Uh, I mean, he is still ready, but he has added some values of sounds in his recording. Check it out and you, you will tell me that, or you will thank me for telling you the truth. Well, we have some other wonderful people playing on the album. You know, hey, we are the saxophonist, the wonderful sax saxophonist, Della. Yes, he was also there to give us some wonderful sax. We had Isaac who did the trumpet. He was also always with me in the studio doing the trumpet. You know, we can't mention everybody. But we also had some sweet sisters who gave us some sweet backing vocals. Nana Amma was there. I've worked with Danama for over 20 years now. I love her so much. Then there was also Ama. There's Ama and there's Danama. You know, Fadi was also there to give us some sweet Dagmani back in vocals. And the whole thing so sweet. Esther was also around. She recorded with us. And then the guitars. There was one man who stood out. Ourake. For me, He's one of the best guitarists in Africa. When we were recording a song like Be My Wife, we wanted some Spanish guitar. So Black Rasta, don't worry about it. I'm familiar with that. I'll play it. He brought his guitar into the studio, and when he strummed it and started playing, we all were like, are we in Spain? Are we in South America? What? And the sound engineer who did the mastering, David Bolton, said, Wow, when I listened to that track, I just knew that it was my favorite on the album. And that song reminds me of something, something, Englishias. I don't remember the other name, it said Englishias. You know, I'm so much reggae by us, so forgive me if I don't get the full names right. See? He loved it. Urake gave us that feel that we wanted. He played guitar on all the tracks that had guitar in that lead guitar but he gave us everything we needed and he would always be there 
on time. We had a horn session. Young, young, young youth who play for the Herbalist Band, our band, they were also there to give us all the horns. For the first time, I recorded flugel horn. How many of you know flugel horn? We recorded that on the album. So don't be surprised, it is a very solid album. Yeah, a number of artists and a number of musicians came. You know, some of them artists in their own rights and instrument players also. Della Jackson did some wonderful work with the sax. He's a master saxophonist. I love him. Koku was also there from the Herbalist Band with the sax. Wonderful brother. Yes, Ninai was there to give us trumpet and all that. Eh, we can't mention everybody's name. But the saxophonist who stood out for me and was always there anytime we called at our beck and call was Mosquito, who now wants to be called Sax Keto. Mosquito was awesome. He only needed to listen to the song and bam, one take, he was done. So these were the people we worked with. And then the Nyabingi. We had the Nyabingi crew coming all the way from the Ethiopian World Federation. Hey. And it was splendid. Live Nyabingi. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Ke, 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 boom, boom. Ke, boom, boom. Te, ke, ke, ting, ting. Aile, aile, aile. Aile, se, la, se, ai. Beautiful. And interestingly, the day we were shooting the video for Aile, 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 that Nyabingi is so spiritual that there was a snake just above our heads in the jungle where we went to shoot it at Adum Waterfalls. Snake just lying on top of our heads like this, soaking the music. It took one Rasta man to see that snake and he told the whole crew, maybe he shouldn't have told us, that there's a snake up there. It was a cobra. And everybody, so if you watch the video, you realize people raising their heads for fear that the snake might fall on their heads and bite them or something. But the snake was just enjoying the spiritual song, Aile, Aile, Aile. Now, the interesting thing is here now. When the false curator, the man in charge of the falls, the security and all that, heard that there was a snake that was almost interrupting our video session, he came in and wanted to shoot and kill the snake. So I asked him one question. Why do you want to kill the snake? We have invaded its habitat. If anything at all, we should be excusing that snake. The snake is only endorsing the music. Leave the snake there. The ladies on set, they didn't like the idea. They wanted that snake gone. But I insisted that that snake should stay there. When we finished with the shoot, the moment we finished and we we're going to have our meals, the snake just slithered away quietly. It just went away as if to say, thank you so much for giving me this powerful music. I'm gone. I will never forget that day. Watch the video, Aile, Aile, Aile. We lit a bonfire like it is done in Jamaica when Naya Bingi sessions are going on. Big bonfire. Whilst the fire was up blazing, there was rain that came down. Watch the video. There was rain that was falling on the fire, yet the fire was not going out. Watch the video. It's on YouTube. Aile, Aile, Aile. H-A-I-L-E, H-A-I-L-E, H-A-I-L-E. Aile, Aile, Aile. Oh my God. The, it was so spiritual. Those who were singing the song, some of them were even shedding tears. Whilst the song was going, the music was going. It was like a different world. And the atmosphere around it, in the deep jungles of Ibri, around the Adum Falls, it was interesting. And the man who did the camera works on the day, Stanley Opari, you know, we simply call him Stan. We have worked together for over 20 years. Very solid brother. Very humble brother. You can tease him from morning till night. He will never be angry. 
Very, very wonderful, brother. Trust me. He did the camera works right from the beginning all the way down to the end. When he's on the camera, he never gets tired. These are the people who deserve blessing so that one day their children would also say, oh, our father worked so hard and this was what he got. See? We did the work and we came out. These, these were the people around this album. The Salaga soldier, so dear to my heart. We did the work. Zab Male, the legend, was in his studio. On this album, he worked on a number of songs, mixing them. But we chose one song because we have so many songs. Imagine, 60 songs. We had to choose only 19. He worked on one song called My Dear Ghana. He did the mix on it and he added his own flavor into it and told me, Black Rasta, this is a crazy song. Zab Mallet can never go wrong, you know? The music was produced by Hot Mix, and then he did the mix and added his feel into it. It's, it's, it's been a great journey. And I'm glad that finally we are blessing the world with this. You have never heard reggae like this. Why am I saying so? You have heard reggae music from Jamaica, which has inspired us all this while and given us all the energy to keep fighting on. Now it's time to bless Jamaica too and say, Jamaica, thanks so much for all these things you have done for us. Now we're going to add some African flavor into it and give it to you so that you can also rest a little bit and say, okay, we've given all this while. It's time to also receive, even if it's for a minute. That's what we have done. My brother, my sister, we worked hard. We put in a lot of time. As for the money, forget about it. We worked hard. People worked from deep within them. And when the work was done, now it was time to do the remastering. You know what it means to say remastering, right? I come from the days. I don't finish the song in the studio and just go. No, I don't do that. I am in every little bit of the journey of the music. From when the voices are recorded, after the songs are written, to when the songs are mixed, and at the end of the day, to when it is remastered. What is remastering? Sonically balancing the music. You know, you listen to some albums, some songs are high like this, after that they are so low, the third track comes so low, you have to go and beef up the volume. No, we keep all of them on the same level, sonically. And then we work on the treble and the bass and the mid. See? To be able to balance it so that it serenades your ears romantically. Even if it is a very aggressive sound. Hey! I've worked with so many different sound engineers who have done a lot of mastering for me in the past. When it was time to do this, I talked to four different mastering engineers. And fortunately for me, I got into the studios of PME, Prime Media Entertainment. Prime Media Entertainment. His name is DKB, David Kwamina Bolton. Originally called David Kwamina Bolton, right? David Kwamina Bolton. But his official name is David Bolton William. But he normally takes out the William. And he's so happy about the Kwamina. Because his mother is actually Ghanaian. And his father, Scottish. He left England and decided to come here. And stay here and bless us with his knowledge of engineering. He's been here for some time now. David Kwame Nabot in DKB. He had a DKB studios in the past. Recorded people like um, um, VIP. And a lot of other Ghanaian legends. In fact, when it came to my turn. 
my very good friend at Araco said, oh, let's go deal with David. When we came into the studio and I told him this was what I wanted, he was wondering if he would get the right sound to be able to master. You know that mastering depends 95% on the original mix of the music. If you bring him a bad mix, you're going to get a bad master. He normally doesn't like that. He wants to be able to mix it and get it right and then give you a master. But I told him that, well, we'll bring it. If it's not good, why not? We can always mix it. When he listened to the sound, he told somebody, I've never heard a black raster sound like this. And I'm grateful for that. And when he went on to work on it, oh my God. I was overwhelmed. Pa, 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 to pa, pa, to pa. He has the right gadgets, the right softwares. He has the right knowledge. He understands exactly what it is. This is a man who comes on time and he lives on time when he's working his extra professional. Oh my God. Look, he would listen to the song and tell you, Black Rasta, this is the idea I have for the master of this song. I think that the bass is a little low here. We need to beef it up a little bit. This is an Ayabingi song. And I think that we need to beef up the bass a little bit and give it this kind of mood. Warm. What do you think? I would always say, David, do your thing. When you are done, I will listen to it. And then if there are any comments, I will bring that to you. He mastered 19 of all the songs. Did I go back to the other mastering engineers? No. They will wait for another time. Because I had the best master from here. Oh my God. So David gave me what I wanted to hear. And when he finished it, he told me, Black Rasta, please make sure this album gets to all four corners of the earth. He gave me more than what I wanted. He worked with speed. There was a time we mastered a number of songs and all of a sudden, he turned to me and said, ear fatigue. I said, what is that? He said, ear fatigue. I said, I don't understand your terms. Your ears are tired or what is it? He said, exactly. Now I can listen to the music, but I will not be able to comprehend it technically. We can listen to it. But to be able to understand the music and say, this is what I need to put in there. This is what I need to put in there. The ear is too tired for that. My God. So we took a break. The next day he came and poof, 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 poof. He was done. I spoke with him a couple of days ago and he told me, hey, Black Rasta, I'm still enjoying the master. You had the greatest sound in your career. Let's make sure it happens. My name is David Bolton and uh, known as David Kwame Bolton in, in Ghana. And I am the COO of Prime Media Entertainment, uh, which is a, a series of studios. It's a multi-studio complex and a record label. Uh, my journey in music has been, I think, since my, as, as early as six years old. Um, I started um, in school. Um, I, I schooled in the UK and they, they, it was compulsory that you pick an instrument to learn. So I picked uh, the violin. I don't remember why I picked the violin, but uh, I ended up with the violin. I wish I'd chosen a piano, to be honest. I really do. But, but uh, I really enjoyed it, and I loved the, you know, the dexterity of the violin, the things you could make it, you could make it do. And then from there, I ended up playing in, in the orchestra. So throughout my teen years, I was playing in, in, the, in the local orchestra, and I, I was in the second violin section. So I learned a lot about harmony um, and mixing different timbers of sounds so the violins with the double basses with the brass with the woodwinds and all of that and how they interact that that taught me a lot about how sounds um, when you add one sound to another it becomes more than the sum of the two and that i fell in love with that and then um, because i also have a background in it in software and so on um, i also found it very interesting with the way technology was changing because music is all about technology without technology there's no recording 
So music has always been at the forefront of technology. So I, I, I always try to keep up to date with the latest in uh, digital recording, synthesizers, speakers, uh, microphones and, and all of that. And I just fell in love with the whole process of recording um, and, and then mixing and mastering sound. You know, um, mastering is, is probably, it, it's the final step in, in preparing music um, that's going to be released to the world. So I think the mastering engineer basically has the last say in how the music will sound. Um, but it, it's also important that um, you understand where the music came from and um, the, the intentions of the, the artist, the producer, the, the recording engineer, the mixing engineer. You, have to, you really have to understand what their process was and the sound that they were trying to achieve. So as a mastering engineer, you're trying to just polish, provide the final polish on, on the sound and not transform it. So I must say that when I first heard the album, man, I was, I was blown away. I really was. It's, um, it's a long time I've heard um, an album so authentic. You know, the, the reggae uh, vibes, especially the Naibingi. I've not heard Naibingi for probably 20 years. And, and people don't really record Naibingi anymore. And, it, you know, when I heard it, it sounded so real, so authentic. All the instrumentation you could hear was live. And, and then, I must say, Black Russell, the, the, the emotion that you bring to the vocals, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I, I have some you know, particular favorites uh, off the top of my head. Um, I can't remember the names now, <laughs> but um, there, there, there was a, the first track we worked on, Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah, that, it sounded so, I, I thought it could have been re recorded in Jamaica, honestly, and you know, the, the production on that was, was top notch, first class. And uh, there, there are some very notable songs in there. And what I must say is that the, the, um, the subject matter, you have, you have dared to explore things that is taboo, but it's, it really makes you think. Um, the, the, the apology song, um, that's, man, it's, it's, at first I was wondering, uh, is this a story? Then I realized, no. There's no way this could be a story. This has to be a true, a true event, you know. And, and then I, I said I wanted to actually ask ask you when when I met you, you know, the, the story behind that song. Um, and then you you've dealt with issues of um, obviously the our, our politics, um, our corruption, environment, and, and all these things. So it, it's 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 a really uh, provocative album, and I, and I commend you for having that, that uh, bravery, even though I, I, I should expect nothing less than, than that from Black Rasta, because he's the one that's always going to speak out against the injustice. Okay, um, we had a few technical issues at first, when, when I first heard it. Um, the, you see, as a mastering engineer, um, you need to have some room to work with. So we realized that um, the, the mixes were a bit too hot, what we call hot. There was, there was no headroom for us to be able to, if we needed to EQ, maybe take out a bit of the lower mid frequencies or, or boost the, the highs or bring up the bass or control the bass. Um, you need to have room for that. So we actually had to um, reject some of the songs and then send them back to the, to the mixing engineer who then had to rewrite the mixes without the, the compression and limiting so that that would give us room to actually you know provide the final the final polish but um, I must say that um, the mixing engineer has been very professional you know and that is a big problem we have in this country that uh, people within the music industry do not like to collaborate they, they, they think that if you're trying to um, improve upon something that's already been done it kind of takes away from, from their work, when it's not the case at all. We should all be coming together to, to, to bring the best out of the work, which happens outside. Uh, just uh, The Grammys were just uh, very recent, and uh, Taylor Swift won so many awards, and you know the, the women this year, they won so many awards. Um, Taylor Swift may be the, the pinnacle, 
but she has maybe 10, 20 technicians working with her, and they all have their parts to play. So just as the mixing engineer has his part to play, the musicians have their parts, um, and I also have had my part as the, as the mastering engineer. So it's good when we can all communicate and collaborate without that feeling of, no, this is my, my turf, um, you know, I don't want you to touch what I've done. Um, but so I think at the end of the day, we had a very, very good product. Very good product. Okay, my, my knowledge of Black Rasta is as a very controversial uh, radio personality. Um, yes, I had heard he was a musician as well, because often when he's referred to um, in media, he's referred to as, as a, TV pre a radio presenter and a musician. But honestly, I, I haven't heard any of the music. You know, so, um, look, to be frank, I thought maybe the music was just uh, uh, a plaything. But when I heard the music, I said, no, no, this, this is somebody that truly understands reggae, truly understands, you know, what the, the, the culture behind it, the, the emotions behind it and all of that. So uh, I, I would actually say you're a better, uh, Black Rasta is a better musician than a TV or radio personality, to be honest. The experience of working with Black Rasta is honestly the opposite of what I was expecting. <laughs> and I'm not sure if he will like me to disclose this, but he is not the person you think he is at all. He's the complete opposite. He's such a humble man, uh, very down to earth, very basic, very easy to deal with. And um, I think that made, that made it a very pleasant experience on, on my part. And, um, you know, when there was some back and forth with the, with the, um, the mastering process, and it was all very cordial, you know, as, as and when we faced some challenges, we looked at the best way to, to resolve it, and then we, we worked on it. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's not the man you hear on radio. That, that's a different character altogether. When we finished the, the project, um, there were 19 songs, which I must say is, is a huge feat to, to put together an album of 19 songs. And uh, Black Rust actually told me there were, I think, I think over 60 songs that were recorded, and he selected the, the, the best 19 from that, which, which is how we should be making music. Um, so at the end of the day, the, the end product, the album, it's a body of work, it's, it's a story, you know, and if, if you listen to it from beginning to end, it takes you through a range of emotions, a range of settings. Um, it, you know, it takes you up, it brings you down, and it makes you happy and very, very sad in certain, certain um, areas. When you listen to some of the songs, it makes you really contemplate, you know, the, the, the wickedness of the world, um, the selfishness of, 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 of um, how, how we can be to, um, and, and, and how we can treat so one another so badly. You know, I'm even lost for words when I, th when I think of what I went through when I was listening to the songs because when, when you're mastering, you obviously have to listen to songs from beginning to end multiple times. And, and part of the mastering process is also enhancing that storytelling of the album because every song has to flow into the next so that um, it doesn't jar the listener. You know, the listener can be in that meditative spirit and, and just listen and, and take in the, the, the message of, of the album. So I must say that it's, it's a top-notch, first-class album. Um, and I've, I've not heard work like this for, for a very long time. I hope Black Rasta was, was satisfied. I mean, he, 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 did, he did say he was very happy with it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's the type of person that if he did have a problem, he would have let me know. So I, I, I have to conclude that, yes, he was, he was satisfied with the work. Uh, Black Rasta didn't discover me, I guess, in the, in the early stages. I, I think it was through a recommendation um, that he discovered me. Uh, I'm really not the type of person that's out there, you know. Uh, a lot of people may know me for things that I've done, but um, I don't like to blow my own trumpet. I let other people, other people do that for me, and and I think that ultimately the work should speak for itself. So um, I must say that 
even from the the uh, little um, there, there was a post that Black Rasta actually made on social media um, saying that he had discovered the studio myself and, and the services and he was so happy with it and we've had so many calls since then it's, it's, I, was, I was surprised we've had so many calls so many people wanting to come in and, and, and work in the studio so I'm, I'm very grateful to him for that I would hope that with the next project Black Rasta would actually come and record at Prime Media Entertainment because we actually have full live room facilities we're, we're also building another uh, live studio um, in a big space downstairs so um, yes I, I would hope that uh, Black Rasta would come to us for his next project and uh, record record everything here so I'll, I'll try and convince him to do that this album you know the, you know the funny thing about music is the the music itself is one thing the success of the music in terms of how it does with streaming numbers how many views it gets and all of that um, a lot of the time it's difficult to to say that you're, you're going to get millions or billions of streams because it all depends on being in the right place at the right time having the right marketing and um, a portion of luck but um, the, the other sad thing is in Ghana we haven't gotten to that point where we appreciate truly good music um, you know we we like to jam we like we like bangers and all of that but um, I believe this is an album that will definitely stand the test of time no no there, there are no two ways about that and, and sometimes it takes that time for people to realize how good music is you know, the, the great songs, I will say that Bob Marley, he's more popular now than he has ever been. You know, from the young generation, they all know Bob Marley. Who doesn't know him? The same thing with Michael Jackson and, and all the greats. So I, I believe that um, this music will definitely stand the test of time. And I, I think in five years time, it will truly be seen as a classic, as a classic. So the album is called The Salaga Soldier. And The Salaga Soldier, is sitting right in. Mm. I love it. We had to do some work on it. And we got it right. Now it came to filming some more videos. Stanley was there to help film those videos. Then we also had Mawuvi. It's another brother that I love. We have been working for just about a year now. And he's also brought in his energy, collaborated with Stanley. And the videos are coming out just like that. Heavy and hot. I like to work with a team. But I need to tell you something else. We have two collaborations on the album. King Ayisoba on a song that I call Zipologu Chip. Zipulgu Chip is the band. Zipulgu is the heart. Chip is it is sitting on your head. Chip, in other words, solid. We call it Zipulgu Chip. I got Ayisoba to lend some vocals on that. Beautiful. He sang in his native fra fra, in fact, correct term, gruni. And I sang in the band. It's a masterpiece for your dancing feet. Aisoba was there and I love the energy. After so many days of trying to get him, oh, I'll come today, it will fail. I'll come tomorrow, it will fail. You know, we had days failing like that. And finally, he made it and boom, we made it happen. But the one that shook all of us was the collaboration with Tiken Jaffa Kohli. Song produced by Hot mix. Mixed by Nana Finn, a.k.a. Two Lock. Two Lock has been following Tiken Jar for so long. More than 20 years now. So when I told him that we have a collaboration with Tiken Jar, he was so, so, so happy. He said, let me hear it. Let's give it the best we can. How did we get Tiken Jar on that? He's a superb singer. He's one of the biggest reggae artists in the world. In fact, he's a Kuchoko artist. 
His music is all Africa. I mean, it's reggae with the African feel that we've always been talking about. To be able to complement the Jamaican reggae. He's one of the hottest reggae artists, Kuchoko artists in the world. Oh my God. I have been speaking with Tiken Jaffa Kohli for some time now. I mean, I'm a big fan of Tiken Jaffa Kohli. His Africanness, the energy. Listen to his music, you'll like it. In fact, as a radio broadcaster, I bought his cassette, Manje Krasi, the first album that he released in Tamale several years back. And I used to play it on reggae, on radio. I used to play it on radio. And I loved it. The energy, the power, you know? Hey, and from that time, I have followed Tiken Jaffa Koli all through. So when I had the opportunity to speak with him and also to think about a collaboration in terms of having a concert in Ghana, it was awesome. Now, I spoke to him about a musical collaboration and he told me, yeah, Black Rasta, we can do it. So listen to the interesting thing. I sent the song to him. He listened to the song and he told me, oh, I like the song. It's nice. I'm going to work on it. Two months later, I never heard from him. Three months later, I never heard. Four months later, I never heard from him. So I contacted him again. I mean, we spoke within this period, but I never brought up the collaboration issue. You normally have to give people time, especially when they are very busy. And when I asked him, he said, Black Rasta, can I tell you the, the, the truth? I said, oh, yes, we've always spoken the truth to each other. He said, I don't like the music you sent me. He said, I don't like the music you sent me. That is why I cannot collaborate on it. I said, oh, really? All right. Then don't worry at all about it. We are going to work on another one. So I left it the way it was. A year came by, went away. A year and a half, I contacted him again. I said, Tikanja, our collaboration, how far? He said, oh, but I asked you to send me the music. I sent the same song to him. He listened to it. He said, wow, I love this song. It's beautiful. I would like to collaborate. Like what happened the other time? I expected him to come back after four months again and tell me, I don't like the song. That's why I cannot collaborate on it. So we kept talking. And then I asked him again, Tikanja, how about our collaboration? He said, I am in France. I am busy. I'm touring in France. Uh, when I come to Africa, then we can collaborate on it. I said, okay. How about if I come to France and meet you there? Can we do the collaboration there? He was shocked. He was like, what? You want to leave Africa and come to France for this collaboration? I said, oh, yes. If you give me the go ahead. He said, okay. I would not say come because of me, but if you are coming, we can do the collaboration here. So I jumped on the next plane with my crew. Hot Mix was around. He came with a mobile studio, and then we went to Paris. I contacted Tikenja. He said, oh, let's meet at a hotel. We met and had a very beautiful chat. Then we scheduled a date for the collaboration on the album. Say okay, and the song is called Oba Oba Generation. If you want it the French way, it's Oba Oba Generation. Tu sa se Oba Oba, Oba Oba. Tu sa se Oba Oba, Oba Oba. Tu sa se Oba Oba, Oba Oba. Tu sa se Oba Oba. I mean, he has an original song that says Tu sa se Oba Oba, Bam. Tu sa se Oba Oba. That's the original one. We decided to put in some more melody. He loved it. He sang the chorus. My brother. So we went home. He asked us to come on the day of the collaboration. Whilst we are at the train station coming up to do the collaboration, 
I saw that he had sent me a voice note. He likes voice notes. When I saw that he had sent me a voice note, I told my crew, Tikenja has changed his mind again. I'm not sure Tikenja Fakoli wants to do this collaboration. He has just sent me a voice note, and this voice note, I know, even without listening to it, he's going to tell us that he's busy or he doesn't like the song, so he will not do it. But Fellini said, oh, let's listen to it. When we listen, he said, okay, yeah, I'm ready. I'm waiting for you, but I'm going to visit my daughter. So when you come, you may have to wait, or better still, if you haven't set off yet, let's do the collaboration. Let's do the singing around 1 midnight. One hour after midnight. 1 a.m. And this was around 6 p.m. So we had about, how many more hours to wait? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 7 hours. I sent him back a voice note and said, yo, we are coming. Don't worry, we'll wait for you. So we went to the hotel and sat down for seven hours for this collaboration. So when he came finally into the hotel room, he said, well, I've booked a, a studio. Let's go in there and do the thing. So we went downstairs into a certain cellar, down underground. And that was where Hot Mix fixed his machines and everything. And bam, as you can see, we made it happen. And when the song came out, he was like, ah! He invited me over to the Ivory Coast. We had a concert, I mean, together. And right after that, he said, Black Rasta, let's meet in Mali and shoot the music video. So that collaboration didn't come easy. We did it all for you. You must enjoy it. Yes, it's called Oba Oba Generation. He's talking about the old people in Africa who are forcing themselves into politics and it's disturbing us. We did a design for the album. And of course, we had Oheneba doing the design. I mean, he put in some very good work in there. I mean, he's been in charge of the designs that we've been doing lately and all that. And then we also had Teng Bill bringing a few ideas left, right, and center and all that. And at the end of the day, we had the whole team sitting down to endorse what we should do. And then we had this masterpiece of an album cover for you. I know you love it. All right, so 19 tracks, very hot and very powerful. Yeah, beloved album. All of a sudden, we had to stop press and make an announcement. It was all over on social media. The 19 tracks have now become 20 tracks. There was a track we were all anticipating, which never came. It was a collaboration. Africa, Jamaica, Black Rasta, Anthony B. Finally, when Anthony B heard it, he was like, what? I must be on this tune. And he went into the studio, recorded it big time. And when he sent it down and the mix was done, oh my God, Jamaica, America, Ghana. Are you ready? It's called the Barber Shop. I love this tone. I've been playing it over and over. And anyone who listens to it is captivated. It's a combination. In fact, it's in between contemporary reggae and, of course, foundation reggae. You know? And when you listen to the vibes, you realize that this is the new Rasta anthem for the world. 
barber shop. Rasta Kiam friend with a barber. And it's bigger than just a man who holds scissors and razors. The barber is an enemy. That is what it means. I love it. You will love it. Yeah, so that is the story of the Salaga soldier. That is the Sophomore album, premium album, wicked album that we have decided to bring to you. Do me a favor. A lot of work has gone into it. A lot of creativity has gone into it. A lot of heartical feeling and passion gone into it. Please enjoy it. Make sure you stream it. Make sure you share it. Make sure that you invite us to a concert near you. Anywhere you are, just invite us. I will come with the herbalist band. We will rock it. If you have a wedding, if you have any kind of gathering, don't bother, even if it's two people. As long as we strike a deal, we will touch down and mash up the whole place. You know, when it comes to performance on stage, you can always trust Black Rasta and the Herbalist Band. I want to say thank you so much to you. We made this for you. Please don't let anybody stop you from enjoying it. Enjoy it, feel good, and have fun. In the interim, the Salaga soldier is officially out. Spread it. Spread the word. Enjoy it. Stream it. And when the CDs and LPs and uh, USB drives come out, when we are on tour and you want an autograph, feel free. Come around. Let me embrace you and sign an autograph for you on any format that you like. CD, LP, or the USB drive. And the t-shirts are also going to be out. The jackets are going to be out. The track suits are going to be out. It's all about the Salaga soldier. At this juncture, I want to say thank you. And of course, to my personal assistant, uh, Fellini. He is a man that I love so much. He can get up one morning and fly to South Africa just to go and buy me some vegetarian stuff that I need. Just because of that, he flies out there and comes in the following day with the items. You know, I sit down, he brings me about seven, 17 different cloths, 20, 30, so that I will look good. Such a man could only be an angel. I want to say thank you so much to everybody who has helped work. To all the radio stations and to all the TV stations, please feel free to push this. It's for you, the Salaga soldier. And to our manager, Pixie Masaya, we want to say thank you. We appreciate you. She's out there also doing the work. We hope to be able to get some more members in our team who will help the team take whatever you can do to support the team grow bigger on this journey. Why not? Hit at us. Our contact is right here. Make sure that you hit at us. You want to invite us to a concert. Anything you want to say to us. Black Rasta is here for you. Until then, the Salaga soldier is officially out. Move fire! Fire! Yeah, 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 yeah,